order. Um, thank you for coming to the committee to whole today. We have, that's the wrong agenda. Um, Four items on the agenda. Uh, Jim. Okay, thank you, uh, members of the City Council. I'm Jim Seitz, Transportation Director for the City, and we'll be joined by several of our uh, regional partners uh, at the uh, for the presentation tonight. Uh, we have three uh, speakers, and actually the first slide changed a little bit because we have a, a Metro speaker. It's a little bit different from which was planned, but the first speaker tonight will be Lisa Hodgins, who's with Washington State Department of Transportation. Uh, design engineering manager for the I-405 SR 167 program and uh, following uh, Lisa we'll have Paul Cornish from Sound Transit who's a project director for them and uh, finally we'll have Chris Arkills who's a government relations manager for King County Metro. Uh, the title of the presentation is the I-405 uh, corridor update and it will include the latest information on the direct connector project, uh, the Bellevue to Renton widening project and some interesting performance data on the express toll lanes that operate within the I-405 corridor. Uh, then the presentation will shift to Sound Transit, uh, which will they'll be operating the bus rapid transit service that will operate in the corridor starting in 2024 uh, with two stations, transit stations in Renton. And then finally, we'll hear from uh, King County Metro on their recent service investments in Renton and other service revisions we can expect in Renton over the next few years. And with that, I'll turn it over to our first speaker. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jim. Hi. Good evening. Um, I guess first and foremost, we wanted to thank you all for having us down here. We really like to come in as a team and, uh, and present this information. So um, thank you for your time. Uh, Jim introduced us, but again, my name is Lisa Hodson with the 405 program. And Jim walked us through that agenda, but I was speaking to uh, the express toll lanes that are out there, what's going on now on 405 and what's coming. Town Transit will be presenting about the bus rapid transit system, where they're at and their progress and schedule. And again, Metro will be up here to talk about their service investments and what's coming in the future as well. So uh, the long-term vision or the master plan that was adopted in 2002 for uh, the 405 corridor is a multi-agency plan. It's a multimodal plan. Um, it looks at leveraging that multimodal through the corridor as funds become available to help um, balance the congestion on the east side. Um, when those funds do become available, we've been working on the choke points first and then now have switched to management and bringing back that reliability for HOV and transit. And also uh, the component of bus rapid transit is also on 405 as well. So we like to show this slide. So our transportation partners, we're all making um, progress at this point. Um, up at the top, uh, Sound Transit with their passing of ST3, you can see up in the upper left hand corner, are actually going to be building more park and ride lots than were anticipated in that original plan, that original master plan. Upper right hand corner also shows some information about bus rapid transit. Um, underneath that as well, uh, the metro transit and where they're at, so transit service and pedestrian and bicycle improvement is over 50% um, funded and or built to date. And then um, also I'll be talking tonight some more about some direct access and then the additional lanes that come along on 405. So one of our major reasons for success with this program and working as a team is we go out to the neighbors, the community, and the stakeholders together so that we can bring a unified message also get feedback and make sure that we're getting things um, discussed in real time. Um, another piece of that uh, collaboration coordination, not just with neighbors in the community, but also has been with the executive advisory group that's been going on. Um, wanted to um, acknowledge uh, Councilman uh, Corman's participation uh, with that council over the last year and um, the active support and leadership he's been providing. Thank you. So um, in 2010, that executive advisory group um, adopted an implementation plan for a 40 mile managed indoor toll system and that would include 405 along with 167. So as we look to bring that reliability back to HOV and transit, 
Um, we've had some express toll lanes that were opened up in the north end. Those came on board in late September of 2015. Also on 167 in the southbound direction, there was about eight miles of um, hot lane extension that occurred, and that was in December of 2016. So as we look to what's coming or what's currently out there right now, we have a direct connector uh, project that's going on. I'll talk a little bit more about that in some future slides. Um, it's currently under construction. I anticipate that will be done in 2019. And then our next project to go out to add is the Renton to Bellevue Express Toll Lanes project. Uh, we anticipate uh, add will be this year and then construction starting in the latter part of 2019. And then that remaining piece is the north end improvements. So in, last year we received some funding from the legislature to look at what we could do for improvements in that north end where we're seeing some difficulties in the southbound direction. And also uh, this year in the supplemental budget, another 15 million that came to the program. So um, predominantly fully funded for the PE, but no construction funding as of yet. So we talked about the express toll lanes up in the north end. Um, that's a dual express toll lane system from Bellevue to about State Route 522 and then from 522 up to the north, it's a single toll lane. Um, these are managed lanes to provide efficiency for um, travel time based on demand. The second piece of the express toll lanes is um, the opportunity for revenue and that revenue gets reinvested back into the 405 corridor. So two of the metrics that uh, we look at for that north end is related to um, revenue and also to performance. So when we look at the revenue side on the, the left hand side, those lanes are making money. Uh, we are, uh, have already reinvested back into the corridor. Um, and then on the right side, that's the performance. So that metric of 90% of the time, 45 miles per hour, 90% <coughs> of the time. And you can see in three of those four segments that we are reaching that performance metric. The one area that we are not reaching that performance metric is the north end. It's in the southbound direction where we did not um, add any capacity. The one thing to think about though is that um, before we had an express toll lane up there, that performance metric was being met about 56% of the time. So we've had significant growth. We did not add any capacity and we're at 63% of the time. So we've increased that ability to move folks through the area. One of the things that we've been asked and I've looked at is so what happens um, in similar areas where we have the same number of lanes out there. So we took a look at I-5 and in this particular diagram, this is uh, looking at 130th Street on I-5, which is near Northgate. And in that area, there are four general purpose lanes and one HOV lane. And at the very top there, you can see some cars and a black line underneath it. And black basically means stop and go. So the traffic is not flowing very well on that I-5 segment. Um, it's similar volume for the, and similar time of day. So this is peak travel, similar volume, similar lane configurations. Then on the right-hand side, that's in uh, the Kirkland area on 405, where we have two express toll lanes and three general purpose lanes. And in that diagram, you can see that in the general purpose lanes, we have heavy traffic, which is denoted with that red line. And then in the express toll lanes, we have the green line, which is basically what we call free flow traffic or meeting that 45 miles per hour. And so as you look at this, you can see that we have um, movement on the I-5 and you can see the sound transit bus. And you can also see that the HOV, which is on your far left-hand side, is moving about the same speed as the general purpose lanes. And then when you look in contrast to 405, you can see that those two express toll lanes are moving pretty fast, or much faster than you can see on I-5, and the general purpose lanes are moving at a relatively good speed as well. So not only just showing you the numbers, but showing you through video what it looks like out there. Another way to look at this is so how much volume are we able to get through those? So on the left hand side in the black and the gray, that's the I-5, so two locations, 145th Street and 130th. And then on the right side, that's um, both directions at Northeast 85th and Kirkland. And so as we look at the amount of traffic that we can get through there with the same number of lanes, it's about 35% more by volume that we can get through with managing the traffic. And then if we want to look at person throughput, 
Um, same thing is going on. So same number of lanes, looking at the people that are out there. Those express toll lanes with the GP lanes is pushing about another 2,500 or so more people through that area than I-5 can do. We also want to be cognizant of, you know, what do people think about these lanes? And so we've done several surveys um, prior to opening the express toll lanes in the north end and then after and then most recently last year, several surveys. And what we are seeing is that um, they weren't very popular in the beginning, but we have seen that folks are starting to like them. 60% uh, of the, the surveys done last year are showing that they prefer them to be there. Uh, businesses like the option. People like the option of using those lanes when they need them. And then this is just an overall schedule of what we have. So the first three lines represent the legislative line items we have for the Renton to Bellevue project. So the direct connector is the top line. That next line is our Renton to Bellevue project. And then we also have a third contract that follows the Renton to Bellevue. Um, underneath that, there's two line items for projects that are in Kirkland, so at 132nd Street, as well as a project at 85th Street, which is a sound transit project that we're coordinating with them on that as well. Um, there's another project below that that is the 522 to I-5, so that's that north end. And again, we have funding for the preliminary engineering but not construction. And then the last one is an interchange in Bellevue, again, funded for the preliminary engineering uh, but not the construction. And the two things that I just wanted to point out are the yellow boxes. So this multimodal part is uh, east side rail corridor. We're uh, helping to build a portion of that trail. So in 2020, there is a hard uh, milestone date for us on our project, as well as um, bringing uh, bus rapid transit by the end of 2024. So we're really trying to line up our projects to have those complete prior so that bus rapid transit goes out with the rapid. So as we look at uh, our current project, so that's the direct connector project. So that is a flyover ramp that connects 405 um, HOV lanes to 167 hot lanes. So folks will not have to get out of the lanes to make their change from 167 to 405. That project is well underway. Um, legislatively, it's supposed to be done by the end of 2019. Currently, we are under budget and ahead of schedule. If weather uh, holds with us, we expect that um, probably early 2019 that those ramps will open. Uh, lots of work going on. I'm sure you guys have seen it just kind of sprout out of the yeah. ground. <laughs> and recently, we've been putting in a lot of the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the girders out there. So we're about a third of the way done with girders, and that's what you'll continue to see in the next month or so. And then also we have some traffic changes to make the, the phasing and staging of that project move along. Um, as noted, our next project out the door is going to be the Renton to Bellevue project. That will be an extension of the express toll lanes in Bellevue down to 167. With that project coupled with the direct connector, we will have completed that 40 mile managed system. Uh, not only will that project bring new capacity for the express toll lanes, but there's also some general purpose capacity in the southbound direction. <coughs> Um, interchange improvements, uh, most notably, is going to be the 44th Street interchange, and I have a slide on that as well. Um, and then I mentioned the portion of the East Side Rail Corridor Trail, and also we do have um, coordinations with uh, Mountain Sound because they also have a project going on in the area. So this uh, just highlights in the purple um, from Bellevue to um, Renton, where the express toll lanes will be, the dual express toll lanes, and then the green is showing where that general purpose capacity will be, be implemented. Uh, again, that's the southbound direction from I-90 to about 112 southeast, and then again from uh, northeast 44th Street to northeast 30th Street. And that one's uh, in Renton, the previous one was in Bellevue area. So looking at Northeast 44th Street, um, you can see the traditional loop ramp that we have down there. Uh, when, that, um, when this project comes about, we will be taking that loop ramp and moving the on-ramp to that upper right corner area. So that will be a new way to get on to northbound 405. And also in looking in this area, looking at how the traffic flows, we have determined that roundabouts provide a, a good system for folks to get through there. Uh, keeps the level of service for those <coughs> commuters through there at a high level, uh, not only at opening but at that 2045 year. 
Um, as well as the roundabouts, we will be doing an inline station for Sound Transit at 44th, as well as direct access at Northeast 44th Street. And Sound Transit will talk more about that inline station as we progress. And then um, we have two bridge replacements, both Cedar Avenue and Renton Avenue will be replaced as part of this project. Um, we need to do this so that we can uh, still accommodate the auxiliary lane from 169 to the south. Uh, one of our lessons learned uh, when we repurposed some of those auxiliary lanes in the north end, uh, folks were not so happy and so we will be replacing these two bridges. Um, I do want folks to know that they are not master plan bridges, so we will be back to put master plans in when that funding becomes available. Um, we have received um, good questions about how will that work. We understand the folks in the Renton Hill and they, they're concerned about access. And so when we do construct this, we will um, <coughs> uh, remove one of the bridges um, at a time. And so when, hopefully my little slide's gonna work. Hold on, I got it. Okay, so we'll remove one of the um, bridges at a time, leaving access down to, so in this example, if we remove Renton Bridge first, Cedar Avenue will stay open. That will be their um, access out of Renton Hill. And then the converse as well, when we um, remove Renton Avenue, then Cedar Avenue will be closed. And this just shows a diagram of how folks will um, be able to go through the area. And also, um, we have been, have received some questions about uh, whether or not we can do some timing of the signals with the city. So we have done some outreach with that and um, may need to work on some of the timing in that area. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yes. <clears throat> Is there a date set for this uh, project to be started? Yes, so we anticipate construction starting about the end of 2019, mid to second half of 2019, right. and then um, it'll be complete before the end of 2024. Thank you. Okay. And, yeah, um, ask a follow up. Yes, you should. Um, Mr. Coleman. Yeah. So, um, how how long will the will the bridges? How long will that um, interval be when one when we're down to one bridge, um, serving Renton Hill? So, our side we've done a, an estimate. We think probably about nine months per bridge. But what will be the, when we'll know for sure, is once we have a design builder okay. on board, we'll know what their schedule looks like. We'll definitely be doing outreach to the neighborhood um, and making sure that they understand and making sure that folks know how to get in and out of the community okay. and, and things of that nature. Okay, so. good, thanks. And then uh, this last slide is just showing us where the East Side Rail Corridor Trail will be improved for this project. So if you can make out the purple, that's what the part of uh, 405 will be rebuilding. And again, we have a commitment to be done by 2020 so that uh, Eastside Rail Corridor can, can open up their trail system in the same time frame. Um, and with that, I was going to open it up for any questions you might have on just the washed out side of the house before I hand it over to Sound Transit. Any questions from Council? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. So um, I'm Paul Cornish, I'm the BRT project director, and I was going to have, um, I have one of my project managers here, Paige Curtin, who's gonna come up as well, and thank you for some of the details. We thought we would tag team this. Paige is someone who you will be seeing quite a bit of in the next couple of years as she leads the south end of the I-405 project. So what we wanted to do is give you an overview of what Bus Rapid Transit or BRT is an overview of our program, and then talk about the schedule and, and the project status. So Bus Rapid Transit is a bus-based, high-capacity transit system that delivers fast, frequent, accessible, and reliable bus service connections. Um, a successful BRT system, we have speed, reliability, and access to the system, dedicated runaways, run, running ways, including managed lanes, which is a great part of the 405 is express toll lanes that, that Lisa is delivering for the program, so we greatly appreciate that. Um, dedicated and specialized vehicles, um, we have both design buses to accommodate short dwell times, level boarding, off-board fare payment, a lot of the things that actually just help keep that rapid bus rapid transit. Um, we're going to look for an innovative station design, 
course, the whole thing will tie together with an ITS system for on-time arrival and departure. Um, again, the operations is get the get the coaches in, get the coaches out as quickly as we can, can to keep that running time short. And then we'll have our own unique branding. We like to think of BRT as Sound Transit's fourth line of business. We have Sounder, we have Light Rail, we have Regional Express, and the BRT is our fourth line. So we'll also be developing a branding system that goes like that matches with it. So like Lisa said, we're gonna begin running in 2024. So we'll share many features of light rail, including as much exclusive right away or managed lane right away to keep the speeds going, service every 10 to 15 minutes, depending on time of day. And that estimated ridership at 25 to 30 includes both the 405 BRT and the 522 BRT. We also have two systems that will be delivering at the same time, and that's a, a combined volume of that. So we have a new line of business. Like I said, we're very excited about the BRT. We have the two corridors, 405 and 522. In total, the two systems are 45 miles long with about 20 BRT stations, and we're, we're pretty proud of, proud of the fact that how much it's gonna be connecting the, the community, particularly on the east side. Um, the BRT stations, and there's a couple examples here on the right. These are, we've taken one from Minneapolis and one from Community Transit about how things can look, can we look and feel specific to our BRT program. We are building parking facilities. In Renton, we're building parking at the new Renton Transit Center that we will be, be um, constructing, as well as a surface parking lot up at the Northeast 44th project that's up by the, uh, the BMAC or the, or the Seahawks building. We will have a new bus fleet. We're gonna figure out what that fleet's gonna look like and what the propulsion system might be. If it's gonna be uh, what we have now, we're, we're taking a look at some uh, electric bus. That's, you know, technology is definitely going there. We're gonna see if that's a viable option for what we need to accomplish. With the BRT program, we will be building an OMF or a maintenance facility. Right now we're looking at that being up in the Bothell area because that is where the two lines meet. Since it serves both lines, it makes good sense for that. Um, so this is a map that I really, I really like, like to share. The, um, the yellow lines on the right, that is, that is the BRT. And the red and blue lines, that is, and purple, that's some light rail lines. And the BRT program, once it's in place, we will be, will be, will be in addition to serving 37 miles of the 405 and nine miles of 522, we'll be tying into the Linwood Link light rail station, 522, we'll tie into the BRT, 405 BRT, plus the South Shoreline station. The 405 BRT is gonna tie into East Link station in downtown Bellevue. It's gonna connect again into the Tukwila International Boulevard station down in Tukwila. So I think this, this map really does a nice representation of showing how the BRT system really helps weave together a lot of these transportation options for folks, uh, particularly on the east side. So we're looking at 10 minute peak headways for the 405 during the peak hour, and then 15 minutes in the off peak. We're looking at running 19 hours a day, Monday through Saturday, up to 17 hours on Sunday. And then we'll need to work these hours to also match all those BRT stations. I mean, all the light rail stations I just talked about, we connect to, and we'll, we'll coordinate that to get all that, that to work. So it's a, lot of hour, it's a lot of service hours, and it's gonna be reliable, and we're gonna have some very frequent headways. These are some travel times that we use. These are in minutes. This is comparing travel on the BRT versus existing bus, bus system. So you can see some of the benefit that we're getting out of our investment to the BRT. <clears throat> so I like the, well, I call these common elements. They're common between the 405 BRT and the 522 BRT. I think all these pictures we've, we've taken from Swift and we are, we're not above taking good ideas from any BRT system in the, in the, in the country or the world that we can find. Um, one thing BR, uh, Swift does, they have the bikes boarded inside the buses. They have a system where they can roll on, roll them off, so you don't have to go to the front of the bus and, and put it on the rack, which is, which is nice, getting back to that dwell time. Um, the various ways to deal with, with ADA, um, we're looking at precision docking by back and rails. It helps us get up, get that level boarding, mm -hmm. get the get the straight in and out. And of course, off, offboard fare payment will be a big part of this system. And a lot of this 
is very similar to the way we run our light rail system today with these features. Uh, Mr. The last common element I'm going to talk about before Real I Real quick. Talk. Go ahead, Mr. Corman. Well, so I, I just wanted to commend you for um, the, the level loading. I, I, I think there, that was my understanding originally that, that we we're going to have that years ago when we first talked about BRT in this corridor. Then I thought there was um, a little bit of discussion getting away from that, which really concerned me because it's not, you know, there's, there's certainly, there's, there's ADA considerations, but there's also people that just kind of need it, that, that don't handle stairs real well. Um, and so I think the more that we can go that direction, the faster these buses are going to be at getting in and out of stations. Yeah, we're doing our best to get that level of boarding. We're also tying in some existing facilities and what's kind of the best medium between what's out there and what's new. But that's all part of accessible, making yeah. it faster, so, keep those buses going. So let's be clear on that. It, there will be level loading or you're going to try and get level well, loading? Well, we're going to go, we'll be building like a new platform to match our buses. We can get the level boarding there. So when we tie into like an existing facility like at Togo International Boulevard Station, um, or say Bellevue, that's where we have to figure out how we, how we get the level boarding or as close as we can get. So it's really a combination of where we're going to work into existing, what makes sense to rebuild some of the existing without this calliope of changes to that and then our own facilities. So that's the goal, is to have as much level boarding as we can. But there's, and I, I don't know the answer yet because we haven't started doing the work, but there is, you know, we're tying into existing, how do we make that work? So it's, it's a clap of things, but what we're looking for is as level boarding as we can get. Okay. And yep. yeah, and I, I would just hope that we, you know, and I hope we can help you to give the BRT priority when it comes to this. So some, some sidewalks might need to be rebuilt in order to accommodate BRT, awesome. but just like some all new train stations are going in for the light rail, um, considering this is Renton's and this is, this is what Renton's getting out of Sound Transit. Um, you know, it's, it's like I, I, I want it to be level loading in Renton, but I also want it to be level loading at every station so that the, the, the driver doesn't have to mm -hmm. get over and run a lift or something that just knocks the whole system out of, out of its timing. Um, so and if the more we can help to make sure that, that the money is spent to do those steps, uh, please let us know. That's fantastic. Yeah. That sounds like we're on the same page on that. Okay. And then our final shared piece is the... OMF for the operation and maintenance facility. We're looking for the representative site for that was up in Bothell, and we're actually pursuing um, a protective acquisition of that site to keep it on the, on the table as an option to look at. We're looking at accommodating 60 buses, expandable up to 80 buses. This will be, uh, we'll do maintenance, we'll have office support, um, repair shops, storage, the bus parking themselves, and play visitor parking. And this is why it's part of the early work is actually to figure out what the propulsion system will be for the buses. You know, if it's battery elect, if it's a diesel, because we would need to find the system to that. So that's kind of the, the big picture of what we're looking to accomplish with the BRT program. Um, we have two consultant teams going, working with us and WashDOT and each other for 522 and 405. And with that, I was going to turn the rest of it over to Paige to take you some of the, some of the real specific details of the I-405 BRT. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Paige Curitan, and I am the project manager for I-405 BRT on the south end, so from Burien to Bellevue. We also have a project manager that's working on the north end, Cynthia Padilla. Um, so I'll be working very closely with you all as we start developing the project and playing the project. Um, going into more specifics about how BRT is going to run on 405, and then we'll even provide a little bit more detail about what you expect to see in Renton. And so the highlights for 405 BRT is a 37-mile corridor running on 405 um, and 518 from Linwood to Burien via Bellevue. Um, there's going to be north and south corridors, and so operationally we're going to be running it, we're looking at running it as two segments, so from Linwood to Bellevue and back, as well from Bellevue to Burien and back, and that helps us maintain speed, reliability, um, and expected travel times there. There will be 11 BRT stations for 405, and that's spanning across seven cities, um, connecting to many of the growth centers here, um, as well as Paul mentioned the three parking facilities. And so we'll have parking facilities um, up at Kingsgate and Kirkland, and then in Rent we'll have two locations with new parking facilities, as Paul mentioned, Northeast 44th for surface parking lot, as well as the Rent Transit Center with the 700 stall parking garage, which I'll go into more detail on, uh, as well as the new transit center. 
And so from North Corridor, going from Linwood Transit Center, uh, we are going to be building upon the I-405 quarter master plan that Lisa had mentioned and all the improvements along 405 that we're able to add BRT service. Um, it relies on managed lanes for transit speed and reliability. Managed lanes includes the express toll lanes, but also includes HOV lanes. Um, from the Linwood Transit Center, we'll be using general purpose lanes on I-5 to access I-405 to get us to Canyon Park, uh, Canyon Park Transit Center, and up getting, uh, upgrading some existing bus stops there. Then we'll be heading south um, to connect to SR-522 BRT, that's running the shoreline to Woodenville, um, and we'll be connecting at the 195th Street near UW, Bothell, and Cascadia College, so we're working really closely with, with both of those folks, entities, uh, to get that planned. And then we'll head further south to serve Brickyard um, and Totem Lake Inline Station. Central Kirkland, which will be a new 85th Street um, interchange improvements for inline station that Washouts were partnering with us to build. And then there'll be some uh, new bus only lanes that actually run into Kirkland um, from the new inline station. So connecting Central Kirkland to the new inline station on I-405. And continuing south, we will uh, serve Bellevue Transit Center, see existing transit center, add a BRT station there via the Northeast 6 HOV direct access that Sound Transit um, built. To go a little bit more detail on the South Corridor. So South Corridor is Bellevue to Burien, and so we will be relying on the express toll lanes that Washout will be constructing starting in 2019 to provide that reliability along 405, um, building new surface parking at Northeast 44th, and in a future slide, I'll show the location of that we can discuss in more detail. And it builds a new transit center, parking garage in South Renton near 167. So it's the Grady Way, uh, 167 near the interchange at the Sound Forge site uses HOV lanes between South Renton to SR 518, and then we're on general purpose lanes to get to Tequila International Boulevard Station. We'll be adding a BRT station there. And then the um, ST3 representative project builds new bus only lanes along 518 to get to Burien Transit Center. For Northeast 44th Street BRT station, um, this shows what's out there today, and then Lisa's previous presentation uh, shows the plans as part of the Rent to Bellevue project and what Washdale will be constructing at Northeast 44th with the roundabout design. Um, the location of the parking area is actually um, for the representative project on the southwest quadrant, Northeast 44th and I-405, and so it's the former Panadobe site currently owned by Vulcan. Um, that's a 200 stall surface lot and it's selected to provide both non-motorized and motorized mode access, close proximity to the side rail corridor. Um, and we currently are working with the property owner to discuss and provide more information on the BRT planning and learn more about what their plans are in this area of Renton, um, recognizing that it's the BRT station is gonna provide uh, support for the new gateway on Northeast 44th. Um, currently for project development activities, WashDOT is an environmental review um, that Lisa discussed and that includes the BRT inline station um, cleared for the environment, cleared for the parking area. And Sound Transit will be kicking off our project development phase, which will be looking at um, doing further refinements to, to the parking here to support the BRT station. So for the ST3 representative project, the location of the South Rand Transit Center, um, as mentioned, is along Grady Way 167. This is gonna be a new transit center with a 700 install parking garage. It'll provide for bus layover and circulation, um, non-motorized mode access. It's adjacent to the South Renton Park and Ride, the existing parking ride there today managed by Metro and owned by WashDOT. Um, you can see that on the, on the right side of the map. Um, so we're currently working with WashDOT, King County, and Metro, and we'll be working with the City of Renton to plan and develop what the Renton Transit Center will look like uh, coming in this coming year. Um, BRT station elements, we'll add those at the new Transit Center, and we did receive approval from the Sound Transit Board to proceed with protected acquisition at this site, so the protected acquisition is currently underway, working with the property owner, and that allows us to keep it as a viable option um, for the Renton Transit Center center as we move forward with project development. So looking at the project schedule, a Sound Transit will start planning building on the ST3 representative project. We just uh, issued notice to proceed to our consultant for the I-405 BRT project, which is WSP. Um, we're currently developing partnering agreements. We'll be working with you all, the City of Renton, to develop a partnering agreement, which will establish the framework for how we work 
uh, together moving forward on developing the BRT program. Um, this next year, we're really going to be developing and confirming the SD3 representative project and, and developing uh, project refinements, including the facility siting. Um, then in 2019, we'll be conducting environmental review and conceptual engineering. And following that, the ST board, uh, Sound Transit board, will select the project to be built and we'll begin preliminary engineering, all working to support us getting to open for service in 2024. Um, as mentioned before, there are elements that WashDOT is constructing in partnership with Sound Transit, Northeast 44th, Northeast 85th, part of their I-405 master plan. And so um, some of these elements will be built prior to the construction of the rest of the BRT system in 2023. So we'll be delivering the BRT system in pieces for the ultimate goal of 2024 service. And so part of this, we um, are developing uh, and conducting a collaborative process. We're collaborating very closely with WashDOT uh, 405 quarter program. Um, we have worked with their executive advisory group and we will be having an executive leadership group as part of the I-405 BRT that will have close collaboration. We're also gonna have a 405 BRT interagency group, uh, both which will be um, invited the city of Rent to participate on. We'll also be conducting a robust uh, stakeholder involvement program, collaborating with WashDOT to provide opportunities for stakeholder involvement with the 405 quarter program, as well as conducting some BRT activities, playing the Rent Transit Center in the Northeast 44th parking area, um, and then other improvements along I-405. We'll also be reaching out to the city to discuss developing a partnering agreement to set that framework up. They'll discuss more about permitting um, and land use and, and other project elements for the BRT program. The, interagent, the first interagency group meeting and the first elected leadership group meeting are this April. So we're just kicking it off the process for the project development phase. Um, and this is to uh, support what, what Paul was saying as far as integration to the system. BRT is a piece of the puzzle, you know, integrating with King County Metro's plans that Maggie will discuss. Um, talking a little bit more uh, about integration on the north end with community transit. We'll be integrating with ST Express plans, uh, bus ex uh, ST Express, as well as Link. And then also thinking about the non-modal, uh, non-motorized modal opportunities and connecting to bike paths, walking paths, uh, transfers, recognizing the, the importance of rideshare in the community, as well as our new parking facility. So it's a full integrated picture that all the transit agencies are gonna be working closely together on. Um, with that, uh, thank you for your time. Love to open it up for questions. Any questions from council? Yeah, I have. Go ahead, Mr. Pavoni. So, so back to the transit center, um, the Renton, the South Renton Transit Center. Um, is that part of the project? It is. At it, okay. Because you you said something about Sound Transit Four and property acquisition. Um. Yes. So. The 405 BRT team went to the Sound Transit Board early on uh, project development to get approval to proceed with two property acquisitions, which are called protected property acquisitions when a property is for sale. Uh, we received approval to get uh, this summer to move forward with that. So that's underway as part of the project. It's an early activity. The two locations we're looking at protected acquisitions are, are the um, bus operations and maintenance facility in Canyon Park in Bothell uh, in this location. And we're working really closely with the property owner on that. So that includes you know, field work and, and, and activities to assess the site and things like that. Um, and so it, what it does is it allows this site to remain viable uh, option as we go into uh, selecting the site for the South Renton Transit Center. So since it is for sale, the protect acquisition allows you to take it off the market while you're doing the planning um, for the site. So I'm a little bit confused here. I, I was under the assumption that this was part of the project, that the transit center was going to be constructed on yes. that location. Yeah, so, so the transit center so why is it an option? Yeah. No, the transit center is part of the project. <laughs> and for ST3, the site that was selected as a representative project, as a site and size and with a cost estimate, was actually on this site. Now what we're doing this coming year is, along with everything else on the 405, is look at the SD3 assumptions for those projects and see if, if, if that's what we like to build. And we like to keep at least one other option <laughs> rent and just, you know, so we can actually compare, we can actually go, do, through, go through and do an evaluation of what would be the best site. But at the same time, this particular site, which happened to be the representative site, so it's one of the projects that we would be, one of the sites we'd be considering for this, 
was on the market for sale. And so we went to purchase it, which we're still in the process, and that is to keep it as a, as a viable option for the transit center. We wouldn't want to go through the process and this gets sold at the end of the year and then two days later we're like looking to do that. So what we're trying to do, purchase it, to keep it on the table as we finish this year's evaluation of this site and any other site to confirm that yes, this is the best place to put that site, but we go ahead and purchase it now because it was actively being marketed for sale. So typically you would, um, on a linear planning process, you would do the property acquisition after you got through this first year, 2018, where we do the project refinements, all, um, the, the, the alternatives development phase, where you do the project refinements of representing, confirming the ST3 project, which includes some data collection and uh, analysis of existing conditions and things like that. Because this was identified an ST3 project and was for sale, we went ahead and we're purchasing the site now. Um, and so instead of doing it at the end of 2018 before, you know, later in the future environmental review phase, uh, we're going to go ahead and purchase the site now. If there's another site close by in Renton um, that provides the same, you know, better, same better uh, space uh, for all of our needs, um, then that would be something that would be assessed in 2018 by our consultant. It gives them the option to do that, to assess another site. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, I, I do have a question. When you're building this, are you going to, where are you going to start? Have you decided if you're starting north or south or if you're going to? Uh, no, we haven't decided that yet. That will definitely be something that we look at uh, 2018 in regards to how we're delivering the project, mm -hmm. which includes thinking about how we're going to phase it, stage it, what kind of partnerships make sense to build pieces and components of the project. Um, there's linear components. Uh, some might be design build. Some might be design bid build, and depending on um, the best way to deliver the project. And so part of that will be looking at the sequencing and constructability, also working with our partners and uh, to see what other projects are happening in the area, particularly along 405 with WashDOT. Well, I would ask for you all to stay in touch with us as you're making that decision, because we may have input on where we think you should start it in light of what's going on. So okay. just keep in touch with the council. Oh, absolutely. Did you have a question, Mr. McIrvin? I did, but I think it got answered. Uh, I'll, I'll ask it anyway, just to, just to make sure. Uh, so when you were saying there would be potential alternative sites, have those not yet been explored? Is that something that could occur at a future date for the uh, the transit center? Um, or have there been alternatives already identified as potentials? There's been no alternatives uh, identified for the rent and transit center. Um, in our consultant contract, we provide uh, the option to look at up to one additional site. Okay. That doesn't mean that there will definitely be an additional site, but it gives that flexibility as we get in before environmental review to look at and assess up to one additional site. You all uh, will be participating on the interagency group and the um, elected leadership group, and so certainly if another site's identified, we will be reaching out to you to, to talk about that. Um, for other locations, it would be something that, um, for example, up, uh, up in other locations, you know, if there's something that Renton really was interested in us looking at as an additional site, we definitely take that input into consideration as we start moving forward with this location. Mr. Pavoni. Uh, yes. So earlier you said the, the BRT is going to be ran as two separate systems, uh, Burien to Bellevue and then Bellevue to Linwood. Um, two different service blocks. Yeah, and so, service blocks. Yeah. So could you... Um, explain why they're ran that way and then also if you get on in Renton will you have to change buses to go to Linwood or will it go all the way through um, for the for the second question yes you would have to transfer and this is the assumptions that were made in service planning as part of the st3 representative project we will be um, evaluating and assessing the service planning in 2018 uh, to confirm that that's the best way to deliver and, and, and operate the system um, in regards to the why, uh, the 37 mile corridor, it's a fairly long corridor to keep and maintain those headways with the layovers and making sure that they're running every 10 to 15 minutes, the shorter block will help you manage that more effectively. Um, and so that's the reason, but we'll certainly look at all of our assumptions as part of the project development phase over the next year. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Thank you so much. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, King County Metro Service in Renton. Good 
Good evening. Uh, wait, where are we? Hi, now we're here. Hi, my name is Chris Arkills. I'm Government Relations Manager for King County Metro and King County DOT. And I'm joined here by Maggie McGahey, one of our talented service planners who does a lot of the work down here in Renton. And we're going to walk through a little bit about uh, what Metro's uh, doing and what our future plans are in Renton. So, so we uh, continue to invest in Renton, uh, um, including fixed route service uh, enhancements and innovative uh, mobility options. Uh, we've been lucky with the economy to be able to add service for the last, um, uh, I think this is the sixth service change in a row that we've been able to add service and we've been able to add service in Renton. We're going to continue to plan on uh, working uh, with the City of Renton on uh, your priorities and collaborate with Sound Transit to ensure future facilities that uh, will support both agencies' bus service at South Renton. So in uh, March 2017, we uh, added uh, 2,400 service hours to reduce crowding and improve on on-time performance in uh, a route uh, serving Renton. Um, in, uh, uh, and you can see that those, uh, those ads uh, were uh, to the 101 and 102. We also invested in several routes to improve reliability. Those were our two <laughs> top service priorities is to reduce overcrowding and reliability on, on buses. Um, so we added hours uh, to uh, uh, in September that doubled the frequency on the 169 from 30 minutes to 15 minute headways, uh, uh, peak in midday, and uh, uh, connecting uh, um, Renton and Kent for, uh, uh, via Benson Hill, East Hill, um, and eventually that will be the rapid ride, uh, a rapid ride line uh, uh, that will uh, be combined with the uh, Route 180, and that'll come online in about the 2021-2022 uh, time frame. In uh, March 2018, we plan on uh, uh, where um, uh, we're looking to uh, um, uh, add service of every 30 minutes midday weekdays on a route that was previously peak only, the Route 153. Um, uh, the Route 143, adding service to the schedule for, uh, to include service reliability. Uh, Route 101 and 102, we improved the, uh, planning on improving the, or we Im improved the route, these are the service changes that just happened. Uh, improved the Route 101 to every 15 minutes midday, previously 30, and changed routing and trips to move the layover out of the uh, Renton Transit Center. That 15 minute frequency is super important for getting people out of their cars. A lot of people won't walk uh, uh, a distance to a half hour service because if they miss it, they're there for a long time. 15 minute service really starts to get people out of their, out of their cars and onto, onto transit. And in September 2018, um, uh, we're right now doing planning uh, to uh, determine whether uh, um, we can make further investments in the F line. We're looking to improve uh, to the, in the evening uh, to 15 minute service between 8 and 10 p.m. We're finding more and more people in the workforce are, are working at, at different hours and it's really important to take care of people who work in retail and other, other things that might get off at 10 o'clock at night. So um, extending those hours, we see our buses getting a lot more uh, busy in the early evening uh, period. Now, um, next, I'd like to you know zoom in and take a look at the Route 101 and 102 changes. The uh, the 102 has um, uh, um, the 101 has been changed uh, to uh, uh, prior to, to uh, um, this was at your request. It, prior to March, uh, the 101 served the park and ride to and from Seattle, terminating at the transit center. Now the 101 serves the Renton Transit Center. Uh, and route uh, to and from Seattle, but it, uh, it ends up at the uh, South Renton Park and Ride. Um, we also shifted eight trips to the Route 102 between the Park and Ride and uh, Seattle only to, to reduce, reduce the amount of buses at the transit center. And currently we're spending uh, 75 to, uh, to $150,000 to conduct a, construct a new uh, uh, bus bay for the 101 at the South Renton Park and Ride. So, oh, oh, I missed the little thingy. You know. uh, oh, it's way too much fancy stuff on this PowerPoint. Uh, 
So uh, next, I'd like to take a look at uh, Metro Connects. Um, this is the frequent service ne network today. Um, um, you can uh, you can see that uh, uh, the the red is the F line, the uh, rapid ride line. Uh, there's some frequent service in the area, um, but um, uh, but not not as much as we'd like. In 2025, you start to see the map. Uh, Filling in a little bit more, you start to see more frequent service serving a, a Southport, um, Southport and the Highlands. Additional uh, rapid ride lines coming online, and uh, the orange lines represent uh, routes that are that five to fifteen minute frequency. So once again, you're, you're getting more con connectivity in the Renton area. By 2040. Uh, and, and this doesn't all happen in 2040, it'll happen in an iterative process as other things uh, come online. You start to see a much more uh, um, uh, vibrant uh, frequent service network in, uh, in Renton and the uh, surrounding neighborhoods. And uh, you start to get much more connectivity to, um, to these. We, uh, we're building towards a system that uh, has increasingly fast, reliable, all day service options that. Uh, um, that allow people much more mobility. This heat map really. Mr. Sh Chair. Yes. Ruth. Yeah, going back to your map before with 2040, I see the lack of services in the area of Cascade and Benson. So I would say that this map only shows the routes that are going to be every 15 minutes or more frequent, so it doesn't show every. Single Again, route. I see the lack of services oh. on the rapid on Cascade and Benson. Okay. We can consider those areas. That population is in much needed of transportation. Okay, thank you. Well, but going back to this heat map, what these heat maps show you is where you can get from downtown Renton uh, today in 15 minutes. That's the green. Uh, uh, 30 minutes. That's the uh, you know kind of yellow baby food color. Um, uh, 45 minutes is the uh, orange, and 60 minutes is the red. Uh, there is red in downtown Seattle under the downtown Renton sign too, but uh, but as you can see from this heat map, there's a lot more connectivity to a lot more job markets and places, uh, uh, both to get people to Renton and get and for people in Renton to get to other job markets, and it, uh, this is a what we're striving to do with Metro Connects is really inc increase the ability of people to use the entire system to get around. And uh, this uh, uh, is the Metro Connects uh, service changes by 2024. This incorporates service to meet uh, ST's I-405 BRT at uh, South Renton Park and Ride. The Metro Connects uh, 2025 network uh, restructures most Renton service to terminate at the South Renton Park and Ride instead of downtown Renton. This is planned in conjun conjunction with ST's uh, I-405 uh, BRT station opening at Grady. Metro routes will continue to bring passengers to downtown Renton. Note that peak trips to uh, in this chart are uh, to downtown Renton are roughly the same in 2018 and 2024, but layover is refocused at South Renton, where additional service will be possible with a newer, uh, larger combined facility. Metro still needs to find space in Renton's downtown core to allow us to serve, continue to serve Renton. Metro connects included layover spaces in downtown Renton. Some of these can be moved um, with some added operating costs for routes to expand to, to South Renton. Still, the service designs for the two anticipated routes uh, would require truncating the route and stopping short of downtown to move the in order to move the layover. So we're trying to balance the service we can provide with the desire to, to have those buses lay over at some place that's going to add a little bit of service time for our, for our buses. Wanted to touch briefly on a couple rapid ride designs already amended compared to Metro Connects to, to help move uh, layover out of downtown Renton. The first is the rapid ride uh, 1033. Uh, the men Metro Connects it terminated at the Renton Transit Center. We will extend that to uh, uh, South Renton to layover and meet I-405 BRT. And that's a conversion of the current Route 240. That's the next one. Oh, wait, yeah. I got that wrong, sorry. Combines routes 180 and 169. Um, this is uh, the uh, second rapid ride route that we've adjusted. The um, and this uh, one also terminated the Renton Transit, Transit Center. We're going to extend that to South Renton to uh, meet I-405 BRT, and that was the Route 240. 
and um, a third rapid ride line uh, will be created in stages in Renton as routes 105 and 106 become a combined frequent route in 2025 and a rapid ride by by 2040. So there'll be uh, four rapid rides in Renton counting the existing F line. I'd like to touch real briefly on some mobility options and uh, a range of services that will go beyond fixed route service to make connections. We uh, are very much aware that fixed route buses don't uh, serve all markets and uh, so we're working on a, a wide variety of things. Uh, we have a new program called Connecting to Transit that helps passengers reach transit via parking, on bicycle, and in foot, and with innovative mobility partnerships. Uh, um, one of those is a shuttle that we're uh, uh, potentially um, uh, piloting in Renton. Um, uh, we're looking uh, for uh, potential uh, leased um, uh, uh, parking locations um, in, in Renton. Um, that's a great approach for us. A lot of times, instead of building expensive parking garages, it's to use excess capacity at places uh, like churches and other retail places that might have large parking lots that are relatively un un underused during the commuter periods. Looking at potential, potential uh, additions to existing secure bike parking at the Renton Transit Center and at the South Renton Park and Ride. Uh, currently, we have eight uh, on-demand uh, uh, bike lockers at the Renton Transit Center and four at the South uh, Renton Park and Ride. Um, and uh, and uh, the Renton Transit Center lockers are very well used. We've also been looking at, uh, those are currently lockers you get for the whole month and you use it for your bike. We're also looking at uh, having a lot more of those bike lockers be on demand where you can pay cash and use it for the day instead. And we think that'll increase the utilization of those. And the last thing I uh, was mentioning was that uh, uh, potential uh, shuttle to on-demand first last mile uh, service that we're uh, talking about piloting with chariot that would use a, a phone app to help pick you up at the park and ride and help you get to your your uh, home destination so uh, really trying to pilot a wide variety of innovative uh, solutions um, also um, looking at several ride share programs we uh, through our um, uh, community connections process um, the van share program is a shared van from a transportation hub, bus, train, or ferry. Uh, it has a flat rate. We have about 20 of these right now. We're also looking at Trip Pool, which is another app-based on-demand shared van to a park and ride or a transit center. Um, and uh, um, there's currently a pilot uh, in Auburn near the Sounder Station. We're looking at van pools, which is a shared van between home and work sites. And we have about 66 of those van pools right now. Um, that operate to Renton employers, including Boeing, the city of Renton itself, um, Kaiser Permanente, Kenworth, Providence, um, and, uh, um, and uh, Rideshare Online, which is a free online self-serve ride matching service for carpools and van pools. So, uh, you know, Metro has the largest uh, van pool uh, program of any transit agency in the, in the country, and it continues to grow and serve our region really well. And uh, I think with that, it's that's our presentation and uh, happy to take any questions any questions from council go ahead mr. McGurvey thank you uh, first of all I want to say thank you for uh, the the point on there on uh, increasing uh, secure bike parking I think that's really really important so I'm happy to see <clears throat> that in there the question I have comes around how uh, bike share programs like line bike and other competitors out there uh, how have those have integrated with uh, uh, Metro um, and has that caused any problems around the stops or has that been an enhancement as far as getting people to the stops or is that something that you guys have even looked at yet and uh, maybe be the better ones to tell no, us that um no metro was uh, actually has been uh, uh, a supporter and, and a pioneer on bike share throughout the uh, throughout the region we had people who served on the failed pronto uh, advisory board in, in seattle um, with the uh, docking stations the dockless bike share, we've been kind of like everybody else waiting to see how it works. And I think there's a lot of media attention to the bikes being left in bad places. But what I see every day in downtown Seattle is people using them to get um, uh, short hauls that, uh, around downtown, using uh, people using them to get that last mile connection. Um, you know, I live in West Seattle. I see a lot of uh, people using those just to get around neighborhoods and make connections that they couldn't. So we look at them as a complement to the system. I think uh, as uh, uh, dockless bike share matures, you know, we'll get better at uh, 
uh, setting up places for people to have those bikes be stored. But we think it's a great addition to our transit system. Any other questions from council? Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have one other thing on the agenda, uh, regional issues. Does anyone have any regional issues they want to bring to council? Seeing none? I, I think Mr. Brian does. Oh, the president. I'm sorry, I got to speak up. <laughs> so uh, a, a couple ones I just want to bring forward. Uh, the first one was from Cedar River Council. I just wanted to bring back that um, the proposed asphalt plan has been an ongoing discussion there. Um, they are looking potentially taking a position on that. As last I, I understand, our, we're neutral as, as a city as it's not within our jurisdiction, but uh -huh. I just wanted to mo mostly update the council that that's still uh, ongoing and being discussed in that area. Um, I, I know we were going to talk Regional Affordable Housing Task Force it's at April a later 2nd. date. Yes, April 2nd. So we'll, we'll, I will save comments for that at a later date then. All right. Mr. Chair, I have one item. To, uh, as you know, I've been serving on the, the other watershed area since, uh, since its inception back in 2000, early 2000s, I guess. Anyway, I'm, we'll need to have somebody uh, replace me on that board. So I'm just reminding you all. Okay. Seeing nothing else, we are adjourned. Will we convene at 7 o'clock as a full council?